Hi, this is Beth Overhow with Central Kentucky Television. I'm here in Lebanon, Kentucky for the 7th Annual Marion County Fire School. I'm here with Scott Lawson. Hello, Scott. Hello, Beth. How are you doing? I'm doing great. You have a great day for this. It's a wonderful weekend, and like I said, we couldn't ask for nothing no better. You know, it's it's going to be a wonderful weekend. Share with our viewers your, your title and what's your involvement with this event today. Okay, uh, my name is Scott Lawson. I'm with the Lebanon Fire Department. Uh, I'm a lieutenant. Uh, I help uh, Chief Mangley out uh, whenever he needs assistance, and uh, my my main task for today is logistics for the fire school. Uh, what we do every year have a fire school, thanks to the county and you know the funding and uh, other organizations that's in the county. Uh, this is uh, one of uh, three free schools in the state of Kentucky. We have people coming from everywhere, from uh, Princeton, Kentucky, from Western Kentucky, uh, from Pikeville, and all the way from all the way up uh, northern Kentucky from. Uh, Erlanger and, and like I said they're from everywhere uh, as of right now we, we we know that we got 25 different departments f uh, in Marion County today and looks like we're gonna have a little over about a hundred and some students uh, for a day we haven't got a head count yet but uh, we have several classes uh, ranging from uh, basic EMT class chaplain classes uh, uh, we got hands-on such as uh, having a propane burn and also we have a, a class at the airport thanks to Johnny Cox that's local with the FAA and uh, they got the classes at the a airport. The plane comes in on fire. And Correct you know you know we we have had our issues out at the airport and stuff but uh, what we need to do is make sure we understand how to get people out and make sure it's a secure scene for investigation and stuff like that so uh, like I said we got two buildings thanks to to some landowners the old Dairy Queen up on North Spalding and I in the floor uh, the fly Shop. Uh, they donated that for our school for the students to get their hands on on doing demolition to the buildings and stuff. Hi, my name is Justin Holland. I'm with State Fire Rescue Training Area 13. We're here in Lebanon, Kentucky, uh, practicing some different firefighter skills. You can hear lots of noise going on behind us. Uh, firefighters are practicing taking out windows, doing salvage, ventilation, overhaul. Uh, we have two acquired structures here in town. You can see the firefighter here breaching the window from the inside. Uh, sometimes we're doing this as an emergency means of escape. If a firefighter becomes trapped or disoriented, they're going to try to find their uh, quickest way to get out of the building. So he's clearing the glass out. It's going to clear the sash. Make sure as much of that window is gone so he can be able to get out with as least, the least amount of resistance possible. Sometimes we use acquired structures like this uh, to burn to, as a practice training. Um, occasionally we're going to get into situations where we're going to come in and help people demolish these types of structures. I may not be able to burn it for whatever reason. And you can see some of these older structures are built pretty well. Newer construction isn't uh, nearly as sturdy. So he's cleared out the window and now if he needed to we can move someone in, out. Uh, we've got that just short of, shy of having a door. That's the best means of getting into or out of a house that we have. The instructor is now showing the students a chainsaw and showing how to check it for fuel and check it for uh, proper connections of the blade and they will be soon cutting that window into a door. firemen are obviously all geared up in their complete gear as would be the case if they were fighting a fire. So following safety procedures, they head to the window. The instructor is telling them what part to start with. And the students are observing.
so that they can turn that window into a door. Here you go. We've got some more expert uh, information coming in. So earlier we saw the firefighter breach the wall, taking out the window. Now we're going to turn this window into a door by cutting the wall that's remaining out. They cut through the, they cut through the aluminum and the wood all in one stroke. Huh? They don't need a Zawzall for that? No, we can cut through everything with the chainsaws that we carry. You, you can hear that he's got it at a high RPM. That, that's going to cut through almost anything in the house, short of anything solid steel. Now, if it were me and I needed a chainsaw <laughs> and went out to the garage to get it, my luck would be that it would not have fuel. It would be dried up, need greasing. Uh, it wouldn't start. What it, you know? How do you all have to keep this equipment maintained on a regular basis? Yes, daily and weekly we're checking to make sure every time that we, we use the tool before it, we put it back into storage, we're going to make sure that it has fuel, oil, that it's in good condition because we never know when we're going to go out on a fire or an emergency call. Uh, you never, we're never, we never know when people are going to need us. So we try to be prepared at all times, whether it's uh, 2 in the afternoon or 2 in the morning. And you can see that, that firefighters comes in all, come in all shapes and sizes, male, female. It's not the traditional uh, big burly man firefighter that you see anymore. Uh, volunteers, career, it doesn't matter. Uh, we can train anyone to be a firefighter. Now where are these students from? They are from, from a department near Elizabethtown. Okay. The instructors, we have some from London, some from Jackson County, and one from Madisonville. Well, thank you for sharing this information with us today. I know that uh, those in the community who are not firefighters appreciate the hard work you do to keep us safe. Thank you very much. We got an excellent weekend. We got a good community. Of course, you know, Marion County, you know, it, it, you can't say nothing uh, better about Marion County. So, uh, but we do have a good facility and we have a lot of, a lot of good resources to help us. How many instructors does it take to pull this off? Oh my God, here we go. Uh, instructors, uh, as uh, it depends on the students. You gotta have so many instructors for students. Uh, I can give you an example of the survival and rescue class we have out here. I think we got like 25 students and so we got about seven instructors just for that. And you know, uh, they are from all over the state of Kentucky also. Like I said, uh, they're from north, south, east, and west. Uh, we have uh, uh, one coordinator from Princeton, Kentucky with us, Ed Smith from Area 2. He's up to help with the propane burn and also the flashover. And uh, like I said, uh, we're lucky to get these people. And like I said, uh, they travel all over the state of Kentucky to teach and also outside of the state. So we got some of the best instructors there, there is in, in the state. Now, do the participants attend every class? or do they pick and choose the ones they kind of want more uh, experience with? They, they pick and choose uh, what classes they need for to meet their uh, hours for the state. And, and like I said, we got 10 different classes. Uh, uh, we have like vehicle education and, and whatever they, hours they need for the year is, w is what they do, they take. And one good thing about, uh, you know, like I said, we, we thank the county judge and the city and all that and the masters. They don't have to go nowhere. Or our local fire departments, we've got over 100 firefighters. They don't have to go nowhere and spend the night, use their funding to stay or pay for school. We provide it free, thanks you know, to the organizations. And, and, and like I said, it's a big task, but guess what? It's well worth it. And, and, and if we have a fire or something, our people are home. You know, the pagers go off, we can go. Where if we're out of town, you know, we're living with manpower and we got to ask for help. And, you know, we're blessed for the weekend school. Oh, that's awesome. So every fireman might not take the chaplain course. I know as you mentioned that, that might be something sort of a specialty of a fireman. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh, what, what it is, it, it it's, talks about, you know, if there's a fatality or families having times and stuff. Uh, we have some uh, people in Marion County that takes that. And uh, when there's a crisis or something, we contact them, you know. Uh, you gotta, and I hate to say it, you gotta be a special breed to be in a fire service because you know, you take a, a, a bad accident, 
you know how, how does people deal with it you know just like a house fire you know people's running out and we're running in you know so we got some screws loose i think <laughs> now but you know everybody's here to help the community and stuff and, and there's times where you, you know you might need to sit down and talk to uh, someone, someone to yes de it. definitely and, and like i said that's that's what that class is all about and uh you know we're blessed i do know that there are more women in the fire department these days and probably more smaller people it's not always the big brawny it's, guys anymore it's definitely not the male you know it says it's male dominant stuff no it's for anybody and everybody and there is tasks out there that they can't go fight fire but there's other things other than doing fighting fire somebody's got to uh, get the tools off somebody's got to pump the truck there's always a task for somebody, so don't just think it's for uh, for the male. It's for anybody and everybody. And like I said, uh, hate to say it's on TV, but there's some women out there better than males. I mean, it really is. And, uh, well, yes. <laughs> and, well, and driving, like said, you know, yeah. some could specialize oh, in driving in definitely. strange circumstances. Yes, ma'am. I'll give you a good example to talk about driving. We're having a driver's training class out here. We got a prop. It's a 53-foot uh, trailer out here that's got driving simulators in it, and it costs $750,000 for that prop. So, I mean, you know, the state uh, fire rescue and the state fire commission, they they go out of their way to make sure the state has all the right equipment and stuff for, for doing training out here. And like I said, you know, you can't go out here and teach if you don't have the equipment. So we are blessed with the fire commission and state fire rescue and all the area coordinators to, to make things uh, happen. Well, thank you so much for sharing all this information with us. We will get some footage of uh, some of the activities going on uh, today. And um, I know that the communities in, in Kentucky and all over appreciate what you're doing. Well, we thank you. And like I said, you're more than welcome to do anything you need this weekend. And if you have any questions, you know, we'd be here to glad to help you anyway. And also, uh, Chief Manley wants to say thanks for coming. Okay.